Hi there, this is Mark Haddad here again. So this is a new video on my YouTube channel. And in this video, I'm going to speak about how we can protect our MicroTech router from DHCP starvation. So DHCP starvation is a type of attack that uh, a lot of attackers can use. And it has one function is to fully your uh, table for the Ds on your DHCP server. Then your DHCP server will not be able to serve any requests coming from any a uh, good uh, customer or uh, computers or uh, end machine to be able to get uh, the lease, which is the IP address, the subnet mask and DNS and so forth. So a lot of attackers use this attack just to not allow all your router to work anymore. Not more than that. Also, once this happened, the attack, then you will see that the CPU on your MicroTech router goes to 100%. Then your MicroTech router is also not able to do the normal task that it should do, something like the routing, uh, the firewalling, uh, the quarter service, and stuff like that. So in this lab, I'm going to show you how we can solve this problem. So in case uh, it happened to you to have a starvation DHCP attack, then you know how to solve it. Now, before we start doing the lab, let me just show you what is this DHCP starvation to explain it to you a little bit uh, more in details, and then I will start doing the lab. So what is the DHCP starvation attack? Say that you have this MicroTech router and this router is a DHCP server, which can provide you IP addresses, subnet mask, and uh, stuff like that. So then uh, let's say that this uh, router, we made it as a switch. So consider that it is a switch. We put all the ports inside the bridge, so then it becomes a switch. Now, anyone connected to this switch, it will request uh, for DHCP if it has DHCP client enabled on it. Then it will request to the server, the server will provide the DHCP. If you don't know how it works normally, so let me just explain to you over here. So basically, this is how it works. Let's say that this is the client on the left side and this is the server on the right side. So once the client is on and it has the DHCP client enabled, it will send a broadcast. And in this broadcast, it sends something called DHCP Discover. So it's just discovering if there is any DHCP server on this network, and it is a broadcast. Once the server received the DHCP discover, he will send what is called DHCP offer. DHCP offer. So he will offer for him the uh, IP address, the subnet mask, and stuff like that. So then the client will send what is called DHCP request. And then after that, the server will confirm for him this uh, lease and he will give him the, 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 uh, the HCP acknowledgement. So you acknowledge that this IP, the subnet match, the gateway, the DNS, all they are leased for him. So every time any computer which is powered on trying to get a DHCP lease from a DHCP server, there is what's called DORA, which is D O R. A DORA. So the DORA happens in the background in order to be able to get the IP address. So what the attacker has done, what the, uh, they said, okay, fine, we are going to use the DORA, but uh, the DORA we are going to use it not only to get the IP, we are going to uh, fully the uh, MicroTech router or any other device, because starvation happens on not on MicroTech, on any device which can be a DHCP server, in order to lease for us all his IPs that he has in his pool, then all the IPs will be reserved, and then no one else can get IP addresses from the DHCP server. And plus than that, the DHCP server, which is the market in our case, will have the CPU very high on 100%. So what this attacker can do, if say that you have something like Kali Linux, which is an operating system that attackers can use to be able to do the attack, what he will do, he will send the DHCP discover, and then the router, which is router one, will send him the HCP offer. But then the client does not send anymore the DHCP request. He stop on the offer. And then again, he will send another DHCP discover. And then this one send him the offer. Then he will send a third time, fourth time. And he will keep doing that. And then you will see that on the DHCP server, on the lease of the IP addresses, he will have all the IP addresses are being reserved to some unknown MAC addresses. So all those MAC addresses, yeah, they are unknown because that's what the attacker is uh, uh, emulating that and then saying that I'm a device, send me an IP. And then he keeps doing that until all the IP addresses are fully reserved. 
And then in case some computer, which is like this computer, it's not an attacker, it's just a normal computer in the network, is trying to ask for an IP, then the ICP server will say, in case he can answer, because he's very busy uh, with the CPU 100%, let's say he can answer, then he will say, sorry, I cannot give you IP address because all the IP address that I have on my pool are leased for some others because the DICP server is not so smart to know that this should not happen. So, yeah, um, then in this case, what we can do, we can use uh, some uh, way to uh, work with the Microtech to be able to uh, get over this problem. And this is uh, what we are going to use in uh, this lab is to work with what is called the bridge firewall. As I told you that this router, we put all the ports, Ethernet 2, 4, and 1, and say 3 also, we put them inside the bridge. So this became as a switch. So what we can do, we can use the feature that Microtech has, which is bridge firewall. So Microtech, it has two different types of firewalls. You have the IP filter firewalls, or IP firewall, which is layer 3, and the bridge firewall, which is layer 2. The bridge firewall, by default, is not enabled. We can enable it, and then we can do some type of bridging uh, firewall on the bridging. So what we are going to say here, for example, uh, say that uh, um, uh, on uh, this uh, interface uh, on Ethernet 1, there is a, a, a switch also, and there is a computer, which is a good one. So this is the good one, and this is the bad one. So then what you can do, you can just say that on if, if I receive on this port, uh, the ICP request coming from this MAC address, then yes, give him an IP address. If I receive a DHCP request from anything else, do not give him IP address. So this attacker will use um, many MAC addresses to be able to get IPs from the DHCP server, but this will stop it on the switch. Same you can do on uh, this side. You say that you take the MAC address of this computer and you make here, using the bridge firewall, you say that uh, only the MAC address of this computer, he can get an IP uh, from the DHCP server. Anything else? No. All right. So this is what you can do using the bridge. So now let's go to the lab and see what is our lab. So this is my lab. What I'm going to do, I have to start from router one. I'm going to make it a DHCP server. So this one is going to be the DHCP server. This one, I'm going to create the DHCP server on Ethernet one. Of course, I put an IP so you can give IP addresses from this interface. This one is going to be a switch. So I'm going to put the Ethernet one and Ethernet two inside the bridge. So then it's a, a switch. And then this router uh, is going to be the HCP client. So by default, this the HCP client will automatically get an IP address. But then what I'm going to do, I have to show you how you can do the bridge filtering. So you can say that only this router MAC address can get the IP address. And then what we can do if we want, we can just say uh, we change the MAC address over here on the switch, we say that um, another MAC address can get the IPs, then we will see that router 2 will never get an IP from the DHCP server. So this is what we're going to do in this lab. Let's go now and start doing the lab. So we start with the router 1. Um, on this router, I have to put an IP address on the interface Ethernet 1. So I'm going to put whatever, uh, 192.12.1.24, just to make it a DHCP server, so we need an IP on the interface Ethernet 1. I will make DHCP server on the interface Ethernet 1. It's just next, next, and now it's not important the DNS because this is just a lab. And that's it. So that's all what I need to do on this router. Now, the second router, I will need to put a make bridge and put Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 inside the bridge. So it is a switch. So let's go to router, uh, which is this one, switch one. And then now I need to create a bridge. And inside this bridge, I will put the two ports, which are Ethernet 1, apply copy, and Ethernet 2. Very good. So now those are bridged together. So they are going to use the switch chip because we can see that the hardware of load is checked. Um, so they, it would use the switch chip, of course. At this moment, I'm using here the CHR, so the CHR normally doesn't have a switch chip, but if you are using a real uh, equipment, uh, normally it should come with a switch chip. If it has a switch chip, then uh, the traffic will never go to the CPU when it has to go from Ethernet 1 to Ethernet 2 and vice versa. All right, so that's done. Now let's go to the last router. 
which is routed to, and let's enable the DHCP client. And then it's gonna be, let's check on which interface on Ethernet 2. So we go back to here and then we enable it on Ethernet 2. And let's have a look. So we can see it has directly received an IP address, which is 192.168.12.253. Very good. So now what I need to do, I have to, I just now remove the DHCP client. So I'm going to go to the interface, to the interface Ethernet 2. And then I'm going to take this MAC address. So this is the MAC address of the interface of Ethernet 2 on Router 2. I will go to the switch. Now on the switch, I will go to the bridge. And from the bridge over here, we can go to the settings. And over here are the settings. You have use IP firewall. You see by default, it is unchecked. So now I can use the firewall. And then when I checked it, then we can work with the filters. I will create a filter rule here which is for the bridge, I say, any traffic passing via the switch going to router one, so that means what? Any traffic passing via the switch going to router one, so it has to go to router one. So it's uh, forward because the traffic is not going to the switch, it's not the ending in the switch, it's going to router one. So the chain is forward and we have to put it in on Ethernet two. Of the switch right so this is the way in to ethernet all right so forward interface in ethernet 2 all right very good and now we can see the source mac address here i will just put this mac address which is the mac of the ethernet 2 of the uh, router 2 so anything which is um, um, this MAC address, actually what we can do is we do it like this. Anything, anything which is not this MAC address, then the action is to drop. So only this MAC address is allowed to pass through the switch to get the DHCP uh, server uh, information. Anything else is to drop. So when you say this one, we just click on it. So it means anything which is not this MAC address, then the action is to drop. Okay. Now, um, let's go back to the router 2 and try now. Normally, it should work. And let's see. We enable on Ethernet 2. Here we go. It is working. Very good. So that's what I, I wanted to, to show. Now, uh, if we go to the interface uh, Ethernet 2, and le um, let's do something else. Let's go to this filter rule and say, let's change the MAC address. Say that it's finishing by 0, 2. Okay, anything which is uh, uh, not this one, then the action is to drop. And remember, router 2 on the interface Ethernet 2, it is 0, 1. So that means the router 2 will not get an IP address from the DHCP server. Let's try. So we go to router 2 now again, and we enable the DHCP client on Ethernet 2, and then look, it is searching, 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 not getting an IP address. And if you go to the switch again, look, the bytes and the packets are in. So you see four, and now it should show uh, eight in a moment because this is Dora happening. So the HTTP, as I said, uh, discover, offer, request, and uh, acknowledge. So it keeps sending. Actually, it's not going to the, um, uh, it's, it's not only sending now the discover and it's being uh, dropped actually. All right, uh, so you can see it keeps dropping and then you can look on over here, it's not getting the IP. Now let's do one more uh, step, it's just to uh, put it now, again, one, and then we look now on the IP, here we go, it just got the IP directly. So this is the best way to protect yourself from the DHCP starvation attack. So this is all what I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, it's all about uh, how you can protect yourself from the SCP starvation attack. Please, if you like this video, do not forget to make like on uh, the video, subscribe to my channel and click on the bell. And uh, also I do have a possibility to have a membership on uh, my uh, YouTube channel. So uh, you can just pay a very small money uh, per month. Uh, so I can keep uh, doing those videos for you and you will get some benefits. Please look that on the membership on my YouTube page. So thank you very much for the time you spent watching this video and I'll see you in some other videos.